Hi guys, I'm Nate from Recapped Now. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 mystery thriller movie called Old. A couple who is about to get divorced takes their children to a tropical resort on a vacation. Their trip soon turns into a nightmare when they end up on a secluded beach that makes them age rapidly. A guy Kappa, his wife, Prisca, and their children, Maddox and Trent, drive to a tropical resort on vacation. When the family arrives at the resort, the staff cheerfully greets them. Madrid, their hotel assistant, greets them with cocktails and guides the youngsters to the drinking fountain. At the candy station, the children meet Idlib, the resort manager's nephew. Later, the family goes to the beach. Trent and Idlib walk about, introducing themselves to the other visitors. During a truth-telling game, Idlib acknowledges that he does not have pals. Trent claims that they are friends and can stay in touch even after he leaves the resort. That evening, Guy and Prisca talk about their relationship. The vacation is supposed to be their last one together before the couple divorces. Guy believes Prisca may reconsider the divorce when they learned her physical condition. However, Prisca insists that her ailment has nothing to do with their failed marriage. The youngsters are listening to their parents' dispute from another room. To avoid upsetting him, Maddox proposes Trent play instead. Trent opens a letter from Idlib and deciphers the code, revealing that Idlib has challenged him to an ice cream eating contest. A woman strips down before dawn on an isolated beach to seduce her companion before entering the ocean. In the morning, the resort manager suggests a secluded beach location for the Kappa family. After speaking with them, the manager draws Idlib aside when he notices him. Another guest, Patricia, begins to seize. Her spouse, Jaron, and another guest, a surgeon named Charles, care for her. Finally, Patricia recovers, and Madrid gives her a drink to help her relax. Later, the Kappa family waits in the van to be taken to the quiet place. Trent realizes that Idlib has left him another note in his backpack. Charles is joined by his mother, Agnes, his wife, Crystal, and their daughter, Kara. The driver brings them to a private spot and gives them picnic supplies for their journey. The driver informs them how to travel to the beach and says he'll pick them up at 5 p.m. The guests enjoy the trek through the nature preserve, which brings them to a canyon and finally to the private beach. While setting up their beach umbrella, Charles notices another man nearby and moves his setup. When Crystal removes her bikini, Charles looks over at the man, who appears uncomfortable seeing his wife. The kids enjoy the beach, while Prisca reads a book near the water. Maddox identifies the other guest as mid-sized sedan, a rapper. Maddox is pleased about the rapper, but Guy urges her to leave him alone because he's probably on vacation. Later, Kara forms a bond with the Kappa children. The children spend the afternoon exploring the beach and looking for discarded hotel goods in the sand. Trent is playing hide-and-seek in the water when a body appears in front of him. Charles and Guy retrieve the mother, while Prisca removes the children from the scene. Sedan, a medium-sized man, approaches them with a bleeding nose and identifies the dead woman as his friend. Agnes complains about feeling ill as a result of the circumstance. Trent also complains about his trunks being uncomfortable, so Prisca encourages him to relax them, albeit she pauses to stare at her son. Charles attempts to contact the resort, but there is no reception on the beach. When Patricia and Jaron arrive, Guy insists on catching up with the resort driver. However, Jaron reports that the driver has already departed. They explain that they discovered the dead on the beach, and Charles accuses mid-sized sedan of injuring the woman, claiming that his nose is bleeding because she attempted to defend herself. Crystal contacts Charles to aid his mother, which ends the argument. Jaron walks back into the canyon, expecting to obtain a signal elsewhere, but he becomes dizzy as soon as he steps inside. Minutes later, Jaron awakens on the beach. Patricia describes how he stumbled out of the gorge, evidently in discomfort, before passing out. Charles checks on his mother, who is shocked by what has happened. Agnes claims that she is fine and that Charles should focus on assisting the others instead. Prisca approaches Charles, seeking for help with Trent. But Charles says Trent is okay, pointing out that he is playing with Kara from a distance. Charles and Prisca eventually approach towards the children, but Crystal shouts out to her husband because Agnes has stopped breathing. 
Charles attempts to resuscitate his mother, but is unsuccessful. He mourns her mother's death, believing that her heart stopped because of shock. Patricia and Jaren introduce themselves to Trent and Maddox to keep the youngsters entertained. Jaren guesses Trent is 11 years old, but the youngster insists he is only six. Maddox insists he is telling the truth, but Jaren believes the youngsters are merely toying with them. Prisca arrives in pursuit of her children, but is taken aback by their sudden maturity. Suddenly, Charles notices a mid-sized sedan running back to the canyon. He follows after him, but as soon as they enter, the two guys become bewildered. They both wake up along the beach. Prisca insists on taking the kids to the hospital, so they decide to look for another way off of the beach. The grown-ups try to pass through the canyon again, but they all pass out. Prisca becomes terrified that something is happening to the children, including Kara. She insists that Charles check on the children, but instead, they see Charles cut mid-sized sedan across the cheek. Charles alleges he felt the man was going to hurt him before apologizing casually. Jaron checks on mid-sized sedan, only to discover that his wound has already healed. Freaked out, mid-sized sedan eventually explains how he went on vacation because he was sick. He met the woman at the resort after they discussed their ailments. She swam into the ocean early this morning, and he had last seen her alive. Later, Charles confirms that all of the children have suddenly grown up. Agnes's dog also dies abruptly. While the grown-ups attempt to find another route out of the beach, mid-sized sedan informs Maddox that his true name is Brandon and that he has lately been diagnosed with a rare blood disorder. Patricia, a psychologist, gathers everyone to discover why they're there. Guy confesses that Prisca has a stomach tumor, which surprises their children. Jaren, a nurse, examines her tumor but passes out unexpectedly. Charles feels for her stomach tumor and realizes it is expanding. Charles advises removing the tumor now, but Guy is apprehensive. He eventually accepts, despite the fact that the tumor has the potential to kill Prisca. Just before making an incision, Charles mentions a movie. Crystal encourages him to concentrate, so he slices into Prisca's flesh, but the wound healed instantly. Jaren advises trying again, and they hold the skin up to prevent it from closing. Jaren takes charge of the operation because Charles continues to behave strangely. They remove the tumor quickly, and Prisca's body heals swiftly. Prisca eventually wakes up, much to everyone's delight. Meanwhile, mid-sized sedan examines the woman's body and is astounded to discover that it has deteriorated as if she had been dead for at least seven years. Given this, they believe that time moves differently on this beach. Prisca calculates that half an hour on the beach causes them to age by about a year. Jaren adds that the children are constantly hungry because their bodies are still growing. He believes that the pebbles surrounding the shore speed up their cell activities. As a result, they black out when they leave since their bodies are unable to return to their regular state. He proposes strolling slowly through the canyon to allow their bodies to reacclimate to normal cellular pace. Trent and Kara spend some time in the tent, discussing how their feelings differ. When they exit the tent, they have grown into young adults. Kara is unexpectedly pregnant, which horrifies the adults. Maddox tries to calm them down as Jaren predicts Kara will give birth shortly. Throughout this, Charles continues to talk about movies. Jaren convinces Kara to lie down on a blanket as her belly develops. Kara is afraid as the baby is ready to arrive. Crystal panics and dashes into the canyon, hoping to find help, while Charles remains lost in thought. Nonetheless, she passes out as soon as she enters the canyon. By the time she wakes up, the baby has been born. Everyone settles down after hearing the baby cry. However, the cries abruptly halt. The baby dies within seconds of not eating. Trent thrashes in fury, while Kara sobs in shock. Crystal begs her husband to help them flee, but Charles remains unconcerned. He suddenly takes out his knife and threatens Jaren to leave his neighborhood. He then turns to Crystal and instructs her to put cosmetics on. Crystal flees, distraught. Maddox discovers Crystal crying by herself. Crystal reveals that she previously fell in love with a man named Giuseppe, but he wasn't attractive or wealthy, so she left him. She says that she had been thinking about Giuseppe since they arrived at the beach. 
Patricia screams, interrupting their discourse. Charles repeatedly stabs mid-sized sedan before casually leaving. To prevent more catastrophes, Jaron and Guy slowly remove the blade from Charles. Jaron chooses to swim into the ocean for assistance as the sun begins to set. He kisses Patricia farewell before departing. While waiting for him, Guy finds that everyone in the group has a sick member. Prisca describes how she discovered the location after participating in a pharmacy lottery. With the resort taking care of all of their needs, including air travel, they can go without a trace. Later, Maddox confronts her mother about the divorce. Prisca claims she wanted to leave to protect them from her physical condition, but Maddox believes she was seeing someone else. Prisca confirms this, hurting her daughter's heart. She assures Maddox that she feels different now, but Maddox says she needs time to process her emotions. Maddox enters the ocean to soothe her emotions. While feeling the waves against her back, she discovers Jaren's body. Guy and Trent transport Jaren to the coast, but it is too late. Patricia grieves over her husband. They believe that swimming into the ocean will also lead them to blackout. Trent and Kara distance themselves from the group as they grapple with the prospect of dying on the beach without having lived a full life. Trent removes Kara's baby's body and buries it in the sand to help her move on. While he is doing this, Kara begins to scale the edge. Trent wants to run after her, but his parents stop him. Despite everyone's protests, Kara insists on leaving the beach. Kara quickly approaches the ledge, but she comes to a halt. Trent yells, assuming she's passed out. Kara then falls down the cliff, and Trent is devastated to see her body. Patricia, desperate to escape, ties up a few pool noodles, hoping they will keep her floating while she swims out. However, she collapses and continuously seizes till she dies. Guy's vision blurs as he looks at Patricia's body. As he ages, his eyes deteriorate. Meanwhile, Crystal searches for her daughter, unaware that Kara has died. Crystal notices that her back is hunched owing to a calcium deficit. By midnight, Guy has finally revealed to Prisca that he saw her lover's text messages. He's not unhappy with her for cheating, but rather with the man she chose to cheat on him with. Prisca, on the other hand, assures him that she is willing to stay with him for now. While looking through the beach's discarded goods, Maddox discovers a notebook filled with beach-related beliefs. The author hypothesized that the magnetism at the beach and the unique minerals within the rocks are triggering accelerated cell aging. Trent believes they could escape if they could develop metal protection similar to that used in x-rays to prevent the magnetism from damaging them. He glances over the adjacent landscapes and notices something gleaming, which he believes is a camera filming them. Guy hears something in the dark at night, but Prisca, who is losing her hearing, misses it. Charles enters and begins slicing Guy to keep him from telling the police that he killed mid-sized Sedan. Guy is powerless to fight back since he has lost his vision. Prisca tries to defend her husband, but he pulls her away and tells her to keep the kids safe instead. Prisca discovers the youngsters and instructs them to hide. Maddox and Trent hide behind a cave, and discover Crystal lamenting at her condition. She throws rocks at them, urging that they do not look at her. After verifying Kara's death, she mourns and lifts a hefty rock to throw at Trent. However, her bones break and recover swiftly at the incorrect angle. Crystal continues to thrash around as her body fails, until her heart stops. Outside, Prisca discovers a weapon and fights Charles. His wound heals, but the rust from Prisca's knife quickly contaminates his blood. The poison permeates his entire body until he dies. Trent and Maddox, the only remaining survivors, join their parents by the campfire. Hours later, Prisca and Guy appear to be elderly, so Trent and Maddox do their best to keep them comfortable. Guy soon forgets what he and his wife were fighting about, and he no longer cares. The couple reconciles before dying minutes apart. Trent and Maddox were even older when they woke up. They consider leaving, but the siblings decide to build a sandcastle first. Trent recalls Idlib's coded message while building the sandcastle, and Maddox urges him to interpret it. Trent decodes the message and learns that Idlib's uncle dislikes the corals. Trent believes it is a clue and wonders if the corals will protect them. 
the siblings swim into the ocean and discover a tunnel with corals on the walls. They swim into the tube, but Maddox's shirt is hooked. Trent attempts to rescue his sister but is unable to liberate her. Meanwhile, the resort driver monitors the ocean via a webcam. He does not see the siblings emerge from the water, so he reports that they drowned over the phone. He determines that all of Trial 73's subjects had died. Later, the motorist enters a research center for a pharmaceutical business named Warren Warren. A scientist called Sydney informs the resort management that most of the previous guests' laptops have been erased, leaving no sign that they visited the facility. The manager observes a moment of silence for the visitors who died during Trial 73. He then informs the workers that the beach find resulted in the production of medicines that saved millions of lives. Sydney then announces that they gave Patricia seizure medication in her welcome cocktail. The medication effectively prevented her seizures for the majority of her time at the beach, which would be 16 years. As a result, the can be distributed more quickly. The company leverages the beach's effects to complete clinical trials in hours that would otherwise take years. Back at the resort, the manager discovers Idlib waiting for his friend. He says that Trent and Maddox have already left, so he proposes he make friends with the other kids at the resort. Meanwhile, someone approaches a police officer on holiday at the resort. The man hands the police officer a notebook, and the resort manager greets new guests who he intends to utilize as test subjects. Madrid offers welcome beverages, but they are knocked off her hands. To their astonishment, Trent and Maddox have arrived at the resort. The police officer confirmed that the individuals identified in the notebook are gone. When Trent shows Idlib the coded message he provided them, he approaches him and confirms that he is his friend. Earlier, Trent and Maddox managed to escape by briefly coming up for air before swimming away from the shore, avoiding the driver's gaze when he checked on them. The pharmaceutical company was shut down with the help of a police officer. The siblings will be sent to their aunt, and Maddox is confident that they will be well. Please do hit that like button if you enjoyed the recap. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more movie recaps. Stay tuned for our next cinematic adventure, and until then, happy watching.